Yeah, we're back. We're live. It's a 10 o'clock block here on a given Monday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and more specifically, this is Community Matters. And even more specifically than that, we're having a visit with Keith Amamiak, candidate for mayor this morning. Welcome to the show, Keith. Nice to have you here. Uh, good morning, Jay and Stephanie. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, that, that's Stephanie Dalton. She joins me as co-host this morning. So, Keith, let's talk about you. Let's talk about why in the world you would run for mayor. You know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a happy time, nor is it a happy job. Why would you do that? Well, I'm running for mayor because we we need change. We need new leadership. We need a fresh perspective. Uh, we need to restore trust in government. I'm running because I care about our communities and. I want to create a better future for all of us, including our younger generations. My, I'm a first-time candidate, as, as you may know, but I have a lot of executive leadership experience in the public sector, private sector, and the nonprofit sector. I'm, I was born and raised on Oahu uh, and have lived here for most of my life. And uh, you know, when I was about 10 years old, my parents got divorced and... I uh, was shuttled from family member to family member. And in high school, I was hanaid or adopted, as they say, by my best friend's family. And the reason I'm mentioning all of this is because that was a very pivotal moment in my life. Uh, they, they were not my blood relatives, but they took me in. In fact, uh, Jamie, you may have heard of him, uh, attorney Bert Kobayashi from the Kobayashi Sugitangura law firm. His sure. son, Chris, and my uh, and I were best friends. Our parent, my, our fathers went to Hastings uh, College of Law. And as you know, Jay, in the 60s, there was no Richardson School of Law here. So a lot of the Hawaii folks who wanted to go to law school went to Hastings in San Francisco. So that's where my, my father and um, uh, Bert met. And so I was taken in by Bert and his wife, lovely wife, Auntie Harriet Kobayashi, and their four, four children. And so what I learned from them was love, compassion, respect, uh, 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 service over self and, and, and giving back to the community, giving back to others and, and giving people a second chance. And, and uh, I, I feel uh, I learned a lot from that. I learned the, the, the power of giving back and, and the power of appreciation. And so that's a big reason why I'm running for mayor. Another big reason is uh, I'm known by a lot of people for my tenure. Well, I'm an attorney by trade as well, as uh, you may know, and some of your audience may not know. I was a litigation attorney. I, I served as an attorney, litigation attorney, primarily business and construction for about seven years. And then I was tapped to head the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. That's the organization that runs high school sports across the state of Hawaii. I oversaw the athletic programs of 95 high schools, public and private statewide, and 33,000 student athletes. And in that job, I had the opportunity to travel across the state, visit every community in the state, especially on Oahu, many times over. And I got to meet a lot of people in those communities, especially working class families. And that was another pivotal moment in my life because I had a Pretty good life as a young attorney, um, decent, good income, you know, living a very comfortable existence, but I was kind of stuck in my downtown Honolulu bubble and the high school sports job uh, expanded my horizons. And what really surprised me, if not shocked me, was how many working class people across the state, across Oahu were struggling uh, just to make ends meet. And, you know, fast forward 20 something years later, they're still struggling. And with COVID-19, they're struggling even more. And it was through those relationships and friendships I developed with these families that made me want to help them even more. I felt good about public service. It's become a passion of mine. It's a core of my life, an important part of my life. And so this is an extension of, of, of giving back to the communities and, and continuing my public service uh, on a citywide scale. You said government, and, and uh, uh, I understand you were on the staff of Senator Brian Schatz for a while. Can you talk about that? Okay, so I was his finance chair. I wasn't officially on his staff, but in terms of government experience, and I'm glad you brought that up. So I worked at the University of Hawaii in an administrative level. Uh, when I was running high school sports, I, 
I had to interface with the federal, state, and city government quite a bit, uh, including uh, a lot of the unions. And then I served uh, in, in government type boards and, and other organizations, whether it's the Aloha Stadium Authority, which I'm currently a member, or the Hawaii State Board of Education. So as a mayor, I think that's important to have that kind of experience uh, that you understand government. Uh, to be sure, I've been in the private sector. I've been an executive in the private sector. I've worked with private business. That's important as well. But unless and until you've worked with government and unions, among other government-related entities, it, it's, it's, it's different, it's a challenge, and uh, I have the background and experience to work with all sectors of, of the community, and that, that'll serve me well as mayor. Well, let me dwell on that for a minute. You know, there's an article in Civil Beat a few days ago about the, um, you know, the funding you've received from, I guess it's a union PAC, um, and I, I want to say about $100,000, that's a, that's a lot of bread. Um, and, you know, the question is raised as to whether those unions will have um, influence, perhaps too much influence with you for their contribution. Um, can, you, can you tell me what that relationship is and why uh, they would not be um, turning your key, so to speak, if you're in office? Well, I've been lucky. I've had financial support from all cross sectors of the community, the business community, the, the, the unions, as you, as you pointed out, but a lot of individuals as well. So I feel my campaign, I like to say it's a uh, community based campaign. And when you go back to unions, they represent many working class families. So uh, I, like my whole career, it's, it's been based on collaboration, commitment, uh, getting people from diverse groups to work together. And I plan to continue that as mayor. Uh, oh yeah, and when, you know, I, I watched your ad and I, uh, I want to pursue one thing about your ads. I mean, there've been several in your, you're really uh, all over the media. Um, what about, what about rail? Uh, you mentioned COVID. You mentioned the fact that, you know, we, a lot of people are having a lot of trouble and that, that includes the economy in general. The economy of the state is in the tank. Um, you know, it's not going to change in the near term, maybe the intermediate term. And uh, as mayor, you're going to be saddled with huge fiscal issues. Uh, so I'm wondering, you know, what are you going to do about rail? That's multi-billion dollars. Um, and um, it, it could be a, a, a big burden on any mayor and on this city. How are you going to deal with that? Well, we all know rail's been been quite a mess uh, up to this point from the pre-planning stages through the construction stages. And uh, we need to make sure moving forward that the same problems that saddled rail don't happen again, whether it's mismanagement or lack of oversight. As mayor, I'll make sure that uh, the city government uh, and the mayor's office and myself be much, much more on top of it. The challenge with rail is yes, it's expensive. It's been way more expensive than we thought at this point, but we're, we're fairly close to completion already. Uh, we, we, it's an important part of a, a multimodal transportation network that any diverse large city needs. Uh, we, we can't just be reliant on cars. We need to give people options. We have too many cars on the, on the road. So we need to complete it as best we can to Ala Moana. Uh, we also can't afford to possibly have to give back $800 million in federal subsidies that we've already been provided. Uh, so uh, those are a lot of reasons why we want to con continue the rail project. The other important part, and you mentioned COVID and the difficulty that, that it's caused our economy. Rail is an important stimulus in terms of transit-oriented development. Uh, Jay uh, and, and Stephanie, you probably had the opportunity to visit other cities with successful transportation systems, rail systems, whether it's Singapore, Vancouver, uh, Japan, and, and elsewhere. Uh, transit-oriented development is, is an important part of uh, the economy initially, but also in terms of helping build uh, cities within cities, where you create walkable destinations, you create uh, more housing, you address the lack of affordable housing that we have here on Oahu. So yes, rail is expensive, it's been frustrating, but we need to be creative and see what we can do to continue it. In terms of paying for it, which I think you want me to get to, um, it, we, we need to look at uh, possible federal stimulus money. I know there's talk about 
infrastructure funding for projects like rail from the federal government to keep our economy going. And uh, hopefully we will get that kind of funding and we'll also just have to be creative and, and be real uh, strict about how we watch the finances of the city. You know, part of the, that creativity, part of mm, getting funding from the federal government is the relationship of the city um, with the federal government. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned that our president, um, uh, uh, I, I don't want to make any comments about him right here, right now, but our, our president sees Hawaii and the city as a Democrat city in a Democrat state, and uh, he doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, uh, sympathize with us uh, or want to do us any favors. Um, so uh, let me ask you sort of in, interlinear, um, what, you know, what are your feelings about the federal government these days? And what are your feelings about the, the relationship of the state and the Trump administration? Um, uh, I have many more questions about that, but the, in general, what do you feel about that? Well, it's unfortunate that the federal government has not been the leader that it should be in, in many situations. And that's forced mayors of many major cities to take a greater leadership role because of the lack of, of federal, proper federal oversight uh, of, of the country in general and of their cities. So it's, it's even more important who we select as the Honolulu mayor because uh, that person will, will well, like you, we can't, shouldn't talk too much about the current president, but that we may have a new president come January. So, uh, knock wood, knock wood, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, frankly, I'll go out on a limb and say hopefully we have a new president, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but until then, uh, you know, it's important for, for, um, for mayors to take an even greater leadership role because, as you pointed out, we are not getting that leadership from our president and the federal government. Uh, as it is right now. Yeah. Stephanie, you have questions? This is your time. Yes, yes, yes. I thank you, Keith, uh, for sharing. I'm a, uh, I'm a tennis coach from Bradford High School a long time ago, so I, I've had a little taste of your world and uh, how wonderful you know, the, those organizations are. So I'm glad to know also about your other background, and I think the audience uh, is, is interested too because that's not completely available in every single article that pops up there. So thank you for that. I'm really interested in your comments about uh, rail and uh, the ways that uh, you're talking about working better with the federal government. I, I've noticed that in your presentations, you're um, talking about working in areas that are somewhat the state's domain, so to speak. I mean, mental health and um, and something like uh, substance abuse and that sort of thing, which who knows why these things are in which pot. But the point of it is, and I think I see comments that are responsive to that, that you're willing to work across the border, so to speak, okay? And that would also include, include the federal situation, especially when it comes to rail, which time in with how to manage those costs, which you've made a strong point about needing to do, and how those, those contracts and all their modifications and all their cost overruns have to be, uh, you know, really uh, looked at and monitored. Uh, is, that, is that how you're thinking about it? Could you tell us a little bit more about how you see yourself in that kind of a change, change role of, uh, you know, looking through these other windows and trying to work through them for the best that we can have in the future in Honolulu, because it's going to be pretty bleak otherwise if, if the mayor can't do that. Right. So with respect to your, your, your comments about rail, uh, one of, some of the biggest problems about the rail project was it was rushed at the beginning. The contracts weren't properly vetted and they were, there was a haste to, to build rail as soon as possible for some will say political reasons or otherwise. And we, we have to make sure that doesn't happen. We need to be careful. We need to review the contracts and not allow for these massive change orders that, that have uh, been a regular occurrence throughout the history of rail up to this point. So that's one thing that would be a huge difference from the past is not rush things and be very careful about uh, the, the diligence that's, that's used in terms of reviewing rail contracts moving forward. In terms of your point about, you know, what's the city's role versus the state? Yes, you're, you're right that the mental health and, and substance abuse issues are more 
uh, state issues. But the way I look at it is Hawaii is still uh, a fairly small state compared to uh, other states uh, around around the country. And when we have the benefit of everyone kind of knowing each other as good and bad, I suppose. Uh, and, and so we have no excuse uh, that uh, in terms of working together on all levels, federal, state, and city. Again, it's still small townish, although we're a city of about a million people. Uh, there's very few places in the country where you can pick up the phone and reach the mayor or the governor uh, uh, pretty easily. And so uh, I, I, one of my skill sets or strengths is to get people from different cross, from different sectors to work together. And I'm going to utilize that uh, as mayor. And, and because we're a small, smaller state, uh, it's incumbent more than ever that we be efficient and that we don't work on separate parallel tracks, federal doing one thing, state doing another, city doing another. Uh, I, I, I think it's really important that we pool our resources and be efficient. The other point I'll make about substance abuse and mental health issues is, yes, it's, I mentioned earlier, they're state issues, but to me, it's such a big problem. Let's stop. We, we in the past, government tends to point fingers and say, well, it's not my issue, it's yours, or no, it's, you know, they point the finger back at me. Um, let's stop finger pointing and, and just come up with solutions already. And, and they're, they're, the issues are too big to waste time about who should be taking care of the problem. Let's just all work together and get stuff done. That's why people are tired of politics and politicians. And they're one, just- the, yeah, one, one of the uh, wild cards uh, here, and you've both touched on it, is the confidence of the people in government. You know, and um, what's, what's happening in Washington in the country, um, you know, has demonstrated that people are not confident in government. And I would say that our polls, our think tech polls also suggest that people are not confident in, in government. And, you know, the mayor, the mayor's office, the city has been the subject of so much mm, corruption investigation over the past few years and prosecutions and what have you. And the prosecutor's office and chief of police, all that. <clears throat> and I, I think I think any mayor has the burden um, somehow of, um, you know, making it clear to the public that that mayor is not going to tolerate any corruption. Uh, that mayor is going to, you know, clean it up. And some of some of your, uh, you know, co-contenders, you know, have have been involved in situations uh, where that issue has been raised. Um, and uh, regrettably, um, what is it, your cousin Roy? is now in the press about, uh, as a cousin, I don't know, um, involved in uh, some kind of a federal thing, investigation. So, so, so Keith, you know, actually you have an advantage of coming at it from a non-governmental point of view, but I wonder if you can speak about the need to keep it clean and the need to avoid even the, the most remote appearance of corruption. Right, I mean, that, that's, Without trust in government, you have nothing. So that's one of my priorities is to restore trust in government. Uh, when it comes to my cousin Roy, you know, he's he is working in the current administration, but he's made it clear that, you know, he's he's going to retire at the end of his term and, and he has no interest uh, in, in continuing to serve should I be elected. And, and you know, I had no interest in, in retaining him. So, um, uh you know, that that's the first thing I wanted to point out. And in terms of my reputation, I, I, I view it as something that's very sacred to me and that trust and integrity are two of the hallmarks that I try to live by. And if you ask people whether I was an attorney or running high school sports or in the private sector that I always have led and will continue to lead with trust and integrity. Uh, right now, there seems to be some kind of communication gap between government and the public, like you pointed out, Jay, whether it's the federal, state, or city level. And throughout my career, I always thought it was important to communicate and always inform the public about what's going on. You can never really over-communicate. Even now with COVID-19, uh, you know, sometimes myself as a citizen, I'm not entirely sure what what the restrictions are or, you know, what's going to be open, what's not. And, and that kind of uncertainty and mistrust, you know, harms, harms government ability to, to work as efficiently as possible. Yeah, that actually takes us to uh, the thing about the economy. Um, although, you know, I, I remember the first time I heard that the city had an office of economic and 
economic encouragement of some kind and, and probably still does have that office. Um, that's really not within police, fire, water, all those infrastructure kind of um, missions that cities have. Um, mm -hmm. But that being the case, it nevertheless falls on the city um, to try to rebuild the economy. And I'd like to know, you know, your view of that, because we, we agree that the economy is in the tank, is going to stay in the tank for a while. COVID is not going to be solved right away. We know that people are walking the streets with no money and they may be more and more unhappy and that will, uh, that will create contention on the streets and uh, who knows in terms of, um, you know, crime and what have you. Um, so how can you as the mayor um, fix the economy, fix, fix the fact that people aren't getting enough? Congress, for my money, is not, not doing its job. Congress is going to leave us in the lurch. It has left us in the lurch. What, what can the city and county of Honolulu do to keep things in balance, to keep people you know, eating, to keep people reasonably, your sign fell down. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We saw it. We, saw, we definitely saw it. <laughs> um, you know, what, what can we do? What can you do? This is a hard one. Yeah, well, the city has a very important role in, in revitalizing the economy because the city and county of Honolulu is, is the biggest county uh, and, and Oahu represents approximately 70 to 75 percent of the population in the state. So it's important that the city, as we talked about earlier, works with the state and federal governments to do what we can to get the economy going. The city can help by, for example, making sure uh, the construction industry keeps on moving forward. Uh, Tourism is going to take a while to bounce back. And so whether it's rail or or the, the need to build a lot more affordable housing, uh, the city plays a major role in that regard. The other important role the city plays right now in this, in this day and age of COVID-19 is to do what it can to curb the spread of COVID-19. Because until we do that, we can't fully reopen the economy. And it seems like in the last week or two, we're going backwards and we're in danger of another stay at home order uh, like we had in mid-March. And um, you talk about going backwards and, and uh, having our economy fall even greater into greater um, depths, uh, that, that will be devastating if we have to uh, impose another stay at home order. And so far be it for me to be an armchair quarterback. I'm not the mayor yet, but uh, what government can do collectively is to, is to emphasize to people the importance of social distancing, wearing masks, and avoiding large gatherings, because until we curb the spread of, of COVID, we're, we're going to be in an economic funk. Uh, but the, the other areas the mayor can help is by diversifying the economy. And, and we've talked about this for decades, Jay, probably from when you first moved here, <laughs> that we need, we're over-reliant on tourism and we need to diversify the economy. Well, if there's a- How, how can you do that, Keith? It's not easy. How can you do that? It's not easy, but we have to start. And three areas uh, I, I feel we as a state and as a city need to look at are agriculture, aquaculture, and renewable energy. Uh, those are three areas that, that are natural strengths of ours uh, in an island state that we haven't looked at. And now to be sure, it's, it's not gonna replace tourism. And I'm not saying we eliminate tourism, but we were over-reliant on tourism. And yes, Jay, it's gonna take a while. We're not gonna build farms and aquaculture farms and renewable energy, you know, in a, industry jobs overnight, but we, we need to start, yeah. you know, and, and we can't keep making excuses. And so we need to get that going. Uh, the city can also help in terms of workforce development. The city has a workforce development office. Let's start retraining because, Realistically, a lot of the people who work in tourism, they're not going to get their jobs back right away, or they may not get their jobs back. We're not going to have 10 million tourists come to Hawaii like we did pre-COVID. We don't want to. Uh, and so people who are waiting to get called back to their jobs at, their, at the hotels, for example, uh, that call may not come for a while. Hale Kulani, for example, as you folks may know, has already announced they're not going to reopen until summer of a year from now. Uh, yeah. So if you're working at the Hale Kulani, you can't just say, well, I'll wait till next year and I'll get my job back. You need income for the next year. 
they need to start thinking about, well, maybe I shouldn't work in the tourism industry. And so, you know, this isn't a, 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 a solution for everybody, but right now the city has 1700 vacant positions. So that's not insignificant. Let's pivot people out of tourism and other places where the restaurant industry, for example, where a lot of people are out of work or the retail and, and get them working for the, in the city uh, in these vacant positions. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and your idea about retraining, that's really good. Uh, you know, if you retrain a workforce, then you will um, attract capital. Uh, I mean, who's to say which, which one you start with, but if you have a trained workforce, it, it, it really begs for capital investment and therefore new businesses. You know, I, I, I want to establish a new show called Hawaii Loves Business. I think we have to incentivize new businesses as much as we possibly, possibly can and, and make every business entrepreneur a huge 10-foot hero. That's what I think. Um, anyway, so uh, Stephanie, there's not a lot of time left. Uh, I, I hope that you're going to ask Keith about homelessness. Well, I was going to ask him about what seems to have some traction in the comments is that he's, he's offered an office of community engagement. And uh, I thought that that kind of ties into opening up the windows across, you know, government to community. And so I was going to just give you give you a chance to talk to us more about that and how that integrates with some of these other issues like homelessness, certainly, too. Well, I'm glad you asked that. But real quick, Jay, let's talk another time about um, about entrepreneurship. Uh, one of the. Uh, areas I want to invest in is to create a small business innovation fund uh, run by the city to kickstart programs. I mean, let's just not count on the private sector to do it. Why can't the city do that, you know, and be a partner with small businesses and help them get kickstarted off the ground? I mean, I, I, I don't know why more governments don't do that and be a partner with small businesses and entrepreneurs. Yeah. The Office of Community Engagement, that's another important uh, part of my platform and my policies and, and my first 100 days as mayor. I said it before, communication is lacking between government and, and, and the general public. That Office of Community Engagement's job will be to go out to the communities and, and, and talk to them well before a wind farm is proposed in Kahuku or a baseball field in Waimanalo is in Sherwood Forest is proposed uh, and, or a playground in Alamoana Park. Uh, for whatever reason, the public feels that even though some of these projects have been approved, as there was more of a going through the motions, or they weren't fully uh, informed about it. You know, people are busy; they don't have time to look at the neighborhood board agenda every week to see what's on the docket. We need to be more proactive as government and engage. And remember why we're here: government is to work with the people and for the people and but yet sometimes the perception or oftentimes nowadays is government is an adversary and that that needs to change government should be a partner with the community and work for the community so that office of community engagement will go a long way in improving relations between the city and, and the public um, i want to add on that on that note let's embrace technology jay you're a big proponent of technology um, let, uh, Zoom has has exploded because of COVID. Why can't we shouldn't force everyday citizens to have to leave their job early, find fight traffic, find parking, sit in the gallery at a city council hearing and wait for hours on end to testify. And then they may not be able to testify because the, they're number 110 on the list. And then they have to go and pick up their kid after school and they can't testify. Why can't we testify via Zoom? Or, or on our phones through FaceTime or, you know, or other, other means, you know, let's use that. Let's use, you know, straw polls in Waimanalo about Sherwood Forest, you know, and people can just uh, opine online about a proposed project. Now, that poll shouldn't be binding, but it gives you a general idea of, of what the community feels uh, about, about certain issues. Uh, we, we need to embrace technology at the city much, much, much more. Uh, we need to create more apps for the city, whether it's uh, paying your real property tax or renewing your driver's license or, or whatever other interface you have between government and the public. Uh, I'm, I really, really want to utilize technology more uh, as mayor. Okay. Uh, that's great. Great to hear. So, Stephanie, you wanted to ask Keith about homelessness. I know you did. 
I know I did, but I also wanted to ask, and I heard, and that was kind of alluded to with the mental health and the substance abuse issues that, you know, need to be across these corridors of power. But the other question, if we have any time left at all, or maybe um, afterwards, but is not, as I've talked with Colin Moore and some of these other commentators and policy people um, at the university, you know, we have this golden um, goose, right? Called Waikiki. And I just, I don't hear much about how to engage, talk about community engagement. How about that business engagement? What are they doing to come back at at the city to be um, a full-fledged member that doesn't just, you know, consume here and, and learn and earn, but also puts back into the city. Have you had any thoughts about that? Because they're mostly multinationals and there's, it's not like Joe, Joe Jones is down there running his own hotel for Honolulu. It's, it's multinational. So can you comment briefly on that? Yes, I, I think it's important for the mayor to engage with these these multinational or international conglomerates that it, it need there needs to be a healthy balance that they can't just try to maximize profit at the expense of the local workers and the local residents uh, that that they need to give back to the community. Uh, in as we all know from decades past, we didn't have as severe an issue where there was a disconnect between us and these mainland based hotel chains. We had the benefit of, of the Outrigger resorts, you know, and then the Kelly family who were very good about balancing the need for profit and taking care of the workers and being sensitive to the needs of, of the local community. Uh, even the Aston chain to an extent was like that, where there were at least local ties. So uh, I agree with you, Stephanie, it's more important than ever to, to uh, make clear to these owners that, hey, yes, you're entitled to try to make a profit, but you need to also uh, have a balance and, and make sure that the needs of, of the local community is, is considered as well. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a source for the, uh, the, the rare, rare, rare bucks that are going to come into your life if you're the mayor, because what are we down, Jay, with the budget in city county? I mean, it's billions. So there's, there's going to be very little revenue. Um, and we can only pay so much in property taxes. Come on. Remember that you've said you would watch out for that. Yeah, but, and you know, the city is not getting the TAT right now. The ledge is keeping it. So you're going to, as mayor, you're going to have to deal with that. It's a lot of money there. So sure. remember the golden goose. I think that we, we should be getting some more relationship with them in terms of uh, revenue for the city. Okay. Yeah. Is, it, is it time for homelessness now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to hearing uh, some breakthrough stuff here. <laughs> Well, as I mentioned, it's clearly one of the major issues. It's mentioned by a lot of people, uh, and and I, I uh, homelessness is is especially important to me because of the Thai. Uh, one of the commercials I talked about my mom and her mental illness issues, and, and the fact that she was almost homeless several times because of that condition. And many people on the streets suffer from mental illness and or substance abuse. Uh, issues as well. So in terms of homelessness, well, first and foremost, we need to build more affordable housing. A lot of the homeless or houseless people can't afford a place to rent. They, they're, they're, we, they're not as prominent, uh, but they're there. They're living in their cars. They're living in tents on the beaches. They're living in, in, in the mountains, literally. And so I've crafted a housing for all plan that seeks to address the 22,000 uh, shortage of units here on Oahu. And uh, the focus is on building housing for Oahu residents and not out of state residents, uh, curbing the activities that ri raise the cost of housing, uh, including uh, illegal vacation rentals. There's still about 8,000 illegal vacation rentals out there that should be utilized for local residents, whether to rent or to purchase. Uh, and third, the city can encourage more development of housing in the urban core by creating more infrastructure like sewer and water and accelerating the approval of building permits. That's a sore spot with, with developers and home builders and we need to just process the permits faster. It shouldn't take two years or more in some instances to build uh, 
to, to get a approval for a project uh, in place. The city can also emphasize or build more affordable rentals. Uh, you know, a lot of people who are on the precipice of being homeless, they, they, they're years or decades away from even thinking about buying a home. They just need a roof under their heads. So let's provide more affordable rentals and that's where the city can help as well. So, uh, you know, housing is a big component of uh, uh, addressing the houselessness issue, but of course, more mental health and substance abuse treatment uh, facilities as well, because I know firsthand from my mom and others that it's, it's clearly lacking and we can do much, much more to address those people who have those issues. Stephanie, we're out of time. Why don't you take a moment and thank Keith for coming around. Love to. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate your taking the time at this crucial juncture in the campaign. I'm sure these are busy, busy days running up to the primary. And I, uh, I think uh, you've got other things you could be attending to. And now you can go do it <laughs> in about three minutes. But, but before you. you leave us, Keith, can you, can you take a moment uh, and leave your message with uh, those who are watching? Uh, tell them why they should vote for you. Tell them what you offer. Well, first, I want to thank you again for this opportunity. It's important, and I, I don't really have better things to do. I mean, this is just as important as any other campaign activity to talk to both of you and your audience and, and talk about myself and the message and, and why I want to be mayor. And this is an important election. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, a pivotal time in our, in our city's history, especially with this pandemic. And the voters have a choice. They have a choice between the status quo or they have a choice to bring uh, meaningful change to Honolulu Hale. I represent that change. I will represent the people and not special interests. And I will do whatever I can to improve the quality of life here on Oahu for everyone, including our younger generations. I have a college sophomore age son, uh, my wife and I do, and I worry about his future. I wanna build a better future for him and his friends and the generations after him so that they can enjoy the Honolulu that the three of us enjoyed for the past several decades. So that's why I'm running for mayor. Um, the voters have a choice and it's important that they get their vote out. It's all mail-in ballot and time is running out to fill out your ballot and turn it in. So if you haven't already, please go out and vote and make your voice heard. Thank you. Thank you. Keith Amamiya, thank you so much. And Stephanie Dalton, thank you so much. Thank Aloha, you, you guys. <laughs> all right, thank you. Aloha, See you guys. Everybody. Bye. <laughs>